you look great. I look like shit and you're taking his fucking hand. Uh, nah, dude, I'm not gonna use the phrase. You can you dude, you go right You look great, dude. I'm just doing this for myself now. Let me get a little something for the personal fucking shot. Yeah. Well, let me get one eye shot for the fucking. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, you got it. No problem. <laughs> no problem, man. Don't worry about it. I can't have my fucking hot dog. <laughs> so basically for lyric content for Flesh Coffin, we collectively came together and we kind of just wanted to, you know, wanted to make a, uh, a concept for the album. Um, the concept, the ideas, lyrically, it's just interesting, it's cool. Lyrically, it's the best. Tom has written, uh, the concepts are there. It's more of a collective and it's a, almost like a story, which is interesting because I've never written like that before. The delivery was perfect, I think. In the past, it's always been like, he's had no time, he had to rush and like, finish vocals in such a short period of time and that's probably very draining on a vocalist and I think he got to spend as much time as he wanted. This time around, I wanted to basically push myself in, I guess, more ways than one. He was very prepared. Honestly, he came very prepared, which is very helpful for me. I mean, a lot of vocalists will come in and try to write stuff like in the studio, and it's like really stressful, last minute trying to get stuff done. Tom came in prepared, he had his parts figured out. You know, we had a lot of time to go through and, and mess with different ideas and, and really get everything locked down the way we wanted to. Progression with him is great. He's always, I don't know, he's always, this album specifically, he's just had really cool ideas. One of the songs is about a, a person who boards himself up in their room and basically just lights him, lights himself on fire and along with the rest of the room, they in turn burn in the flames and someone back home, I knew from a younger age, they ended up disappearing for a couple months and then coming back, covered himself in gas and he burned himself alive in his basement. Lyrically, like I said, I feel like it's all a reflection of that negativity that we've all felt for so long and it's all just coming out and the, the music really showcased a nice front for Tom to display some emotions. It was easy for me to write about something like that because that's what the song made me feel. It definitely made me feel the idea of being in close somewhere and <clears throat> finding comfort in the darkness, I guess. It was rather easy to write about death because of the fact of the matter that everybody's around it, everybody's forced to deal with it, whether it's a young age or at older age, however your mind chooses to really deal with it, whether it bends or breaks is, you know, really up to you. He thinks above and beyond, he thinks, you know, really deep into things and, you know, he wants to, he wants to push the envelope. He... Uh, I think vocals are a lot more awesome this time around. Um, you could hear them, it sounds like how Tom sh should sound. It just sounds like a wall of terror, it's just like, <laughs> coming to just like destroy you. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's just super intense the whole way through. It's, it's, uh, it's quite right. Um, everyone in the band is, you know, ecstatic about his performance. You know, there's no guest spots. It's just Tom. I don't know. I can't talk about his stuff on this enough. I like it a lot. Yeah. The lyrics are great. The delivery is great. The whole album. I don't think we need anyone else. He's got so many ranges. He's got so many different ideas and he stepped up so much on this album. It's Definitely really excited about it. There's a realness to his vocals this time. I was there half the time he was tracking. I'd be sitting in the room and he'd one of, a lot of it's one take. You know, a lot of it's just the first time he went around. There's definitely a lot more of an emotional feel to the music along with the vocals. Really like honing in on what he wants to do, what he wants to say, and how it wants to sound. And I think that makes a big difference. Tom wants to make sure his name is known in this hard scene of vocals. There's a lot of good people out there, and I'm just trying to be better than them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Can <laughs> <laughs> we do that again? Yeah. Hell yeah. That was sick. All right, here we go. Thank you. Uh, I'm Carson Slovak. I'm a producer and owner of Atrium Audio with Grant McFarland. I am Grant from Atrium Audio. Grant and Carson, also known as the Galactic Empire. Those two guys are just awesome.
also known as HM Audio, where we recorded. Recording at HM was definitely an awesome process. Carson and Grant have a really good workflow to them. I had a blast uh, working with Lauren Shore. I think they're real cool dudes. Um, they were super fun to hang out with and just chill. It's very easy to work with, and you know, I think ultimately we ended up creating something that I think is going to be uh, very diverse and very uh, intense. The ball is constantly rolling, and I think because they have a really good workflow, it allows us to spend as much time on what we want to. It was a really, really, really professional environment. Um, Grant and Carson really helped us hone the music and toned it in. And um, I also think Grant helped a lot with vocals. I spent a majority of my time working with Tom on vocals. No, just an awesome person to work with. Really, I think, pushed Tom vocally. You know, even working with Grant with my vocals, like he definitely gave me some cool ideas that I wouldn't really think about for the most part, but pushed me to like try new things as I'm very stubborn with what I do. A person can get more out of him and I think it really happened on this album. Uh, you know, he's a great performer and a lot of different, you know, versatile options as far as his uh, his voicings and, and, you know, was able to, you know, if I threw something at him that he wasn't expecting, you know, he could change it on the fly. All around, man, Grant was a good fit for him. He worked with him well. Uh, they're hilarious. Uh, you know, the entire time is... <laughs> There's always something crazy going on <laughs> in the studio with these guys. I got to do whatever I wanted for the most part. If I wanted to smoke weed in the doorway with my underwear on, I smoked weed in the doorway with my underwear on. If I want to be upstairs with Grant, who doesn't smoke weed, with my underwear on and smoking weed next to Grant, I would be upstairs next to Grant with my underwear on, smoking next to Grant. <laughs> there we go, Tommy. I think he secretly liked it. I think he felt a little more comfortable because he doesn't have someone kind of like rushing and breathing down his neck. He had someone there to like help him out if he need be. And it was for me the best experience I've had with anybody because it was very hands-on. They were willing to listen to my compromises. Adam writes a lot of cool shit. Because we had so much time to work on stuff, they allowed me to sit there and mess with stupid delay times on a, on a guitar lead or listen to the same riff over and over again and see if I need to change a little bit of a melody. We had plenty of time to do you know, what we wanted to do and, and make the songs how we wanted them to sound. So. We did a lot of cool production on it, uh, just kind of like layering with like a lot of the guitar parts and everything, and uh, kind of makes it feel more dynamic. And I think it's encouraging because you don't feel like pressured and they're willing to give you that space to kind of perfect your craft, I guess. Killer material and uh, they're great players and they deliver great performances, so I couldn't be, uh, couldn't be happier. Carson is probably the most calm person I've ever recorded with, and I think that definitely made it easy for me to track, especially when it comes to parts that I was unfamiliar with. I, I really like uh, the fact that it kind of incorporates several different uh, signature sounds into one thing, you know? Like, you guys have very epic black metal type parts with a lot of like melody and really fast blasting and stuff but then you have like super technical like riffing stuff and I like a lot of that too and I just think it's a, a cool uh, you know kind of blend of all these different influences that you don't hear in a lot of other bands you know right now. Uh, it is fast and heavy as shit. Uh, it's really both of those. All times they were nothing but the greatest people to us. It was definitely the the best studio myself and the band has recorded at. Not that we've had bad experiences, we've just never really felt that real like vibe of, of someone that's really wanting to work with us in a long time. Definitely made sense to go to Atrium, hope we continue to go there. Stuff turned out sick and I'm really, really stoked for everyone to hear it. Ding, 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 ding. Glad everyone can see your real side. Good. Good. Good, 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 good. Red Lady is here on your phone! My phone!
as someone who is the primary writer for the band, I feel responsible when the album doesn't do well. And I think I kind of want to make up for what I did wrong and um, at least show people that that we're more of a band than people think we are. Being a record where people weren't fast forwarding through the parts just to get to the heavy part, but were finding themselves listening to the entire song, just enjoying it um, for what it is. I definitely want to kind of maybe shake up the genre a little bit instead of having this ill perception of what they think it is. And I think that I just want to give myself and the rest of the band a prosperous future and write a awesome album. I mean, nothing against anybody else, but we definitely want to be the biggest band that we could possibly be. And I hope this is the, uh, the start of it. We're truly a force to be reckoned with. Even though we're not super established and we don't have a gigantic following, we're definitely going to be at the base of the pillars of uh, the big dogs shaking their fucking house. I think we want to just go out and, and be the biggest band we possibly can be, and I think it starts with writing, I guess, an album that the band is super proud of, is super excited about, and like really depicts the vision of who we are as a band.